Well, hello and welcome back to the big board. Let's have a conversation about the Dark Sands, War in North Africa, 40 through 42. This is a Ted Racier game from GMT. And look at me being all professional. That must be because I'm all suited up and ready to roll and uh, go do some real work versus have fun playing games. But I thought I'd take a few minutes to give you my early, very early impressions after finishing first scenario and and giving uh, giving you my I guess some you know some insights etc or whatever not really insights but just more opinions I think so that's the lone Commonwealth unit left on the board fearless Aussies from the ninth there's a few hapless dudes over here which I believe are eliminated actually because they're out of supply and at the in the attrition phase at the end phase of the sequence of play you kill things and I just got to check to see whether you kill them or, or they lose a step but I, I believe they're eliminated anyway so <clears throat> there are not a lot of units left on the board and the first you know your first reaction is probably well gosh that just has to be broken and you would be wrong because I am a horrible game player uh, I made the mistake of uh, putting units in Gazala uh, to defend that uh, across this uh, piece of terrain, which is a, a ridge, right? And it was protected on this flank because it's got the escarpment there. And I was thinking, this is great. Well, it turns out that those units were scheduled to be withdrawn. And unlike a lot of uh, games, or I shouldn't say a lot of games, unlike some games... When you're scheduled to be withdrawn, you just pick those suckers up off the map and move and you take them off. You don't move them away and you don't really get a chance to go, oops. So I did not pay close enough attention to these wonderfully organized turn tracks of reinforcements. The red boxes are units that are withdrawn, green ones, uh, units coming in and all sorts of fun stuff like that or upgrades or whatever the case may be. I believe they're upgrades actually. So... I kind of screwed up there a little bit and that was all my fault. So let me just switch around here for a second. There we go. I'm going to keep doing this. So I guess that's not going to work while I'm filming. Anyway, I was trying to swap cameras. Let's talk about the, the overall situation. You're, you are in, a, in the overall command of the theater, so it's a theater-wide responsibility. Your, your OB is as detailed as any OB at this scale. We sort of dig down into the brigade level with the occasional and regimental level, and there's the occasional battalion of uh, tanks or whatever the case may be, I believe. Uh, here we go. It's a battalion of armored cars, right? So it does get down to a couple of battalion scale units, but very, very few. Air is abstracted in terms of it being combat factors that are added to the to the battle, right? Art works quite nice on them. Uh, same with naval. Supply is handled in the typical dark sands, dark valley manner. There are two logistics chit in the chit pull cup. And if I fail to mention that it's chip pull, it's chip pull. And this is where it gets interesting and the replay value just goes uh, up and up and up. And, and one of the reasons why this particular scenario ended up the way it did. If I had, had not have won as the Germans, I was consider, considering continuing the campaign play. <clears throat> but I think what I'll do is I'll set up the next scenario and then we'll kind of go forward from there and, and see what happens and see if that allows me to go through uh, and carry on with the campaign. It's coming back to these chits. So each turn, each two month turn, has a British and access line here and you're doing just like you would have done with the Dark Valley here. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. <clears throat> and you can see that there are two move chits, two move combat half chits. Uh, Rommel, Africa Core, 21 Core, two full move or combat chits, and two half uh, move or combat chits. So the cadence of the combat changes over time. The cadence of the gameplay changes over time. 
Uh, there's so there's there's some nuance to that because it really does depend on when the chits come out. You've got two logistics chits in there. You've got a reinforcement chit in there. You've got something else. What else is in the bucket for next turn? I put the chits in for next turn. And then you've got uh, there are some commander things. So you've got like well I mentioned Rommel. Uh, but Rommel and Africa Corps and 21 Corps and O'Connor and Monty and all that sort of stuff, they have some special capabilities. The 8th Army has some special capabilities. And it gives a lot of really good flavor to the game. Now, I, I think I... I don't think I have my copy of the Dark Valley anymore because I was offered a, a lot of money for it and I sold it because I needed to pay for camera equipment and more games and bits and pieces. So... Uh, I need to start a GoFundMe or something. You people, why, why don't you people send me money? Uh, so uh, I was surprised at how short the rules were. We got 20 pages of rules here. And with this few counters and this uh, you know, limited geographical area that we're playing in, I found that this played incredibly quickly. And, and where, where I felt like with the Dark Valley, which I played three or four times, I played the campaign twice, and then I played the Bull Blau, or whatever it's called. I played Case Blue. I played that scenario. Uh, this, this moved really, really quickly. There's only, you know, there's only a dozen counters on the time for each side, and sometimes there's less. Uh, so it went really well. And I really enjoyed it. And one thing it did pull out to me was that, you know, this is, this feels more to me, and now I'm probably going to step into dangerous waters because it's been a while, but it feels more to me like a, an Avalon Hill style D-Day or Waterloo or, you know, but modernized version of that with chip pull. And I'll, let me just, uh, explain a little bit about that right so we're back uh i had to stop there and i thought i'd change cameras so we can have a chat and why are we looks like we're zoomed in here maybe i need to sit this sucker back a little bit there we go you can look at the rags up on the roof i don't know sit still so uh i was, I was saying that it felt like a, a d-day or um waterloo or africa Corps or something like that but modernized and and more interesting uh because it plays fast and it's fun but do, i don't think you should have the expectation that this is going to be the desert fox or you know the campaign for north africa or uh you know dac or dac 2 or anything like that it's not that level of detail you're like i said there's a lot of abstraction in this game and it's not bad it's just that's what it is. And I saw actually a game on con in um, Seattle that they they set up and tore down a scenario in about, four, I would say, 40 minutes to an hour. It was only a three or four turn thing, but they cranked through it all. That's kind of working it out as they went along. They were, I think they were actually punching, punching counters as they went along. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look at the photographs from the con to be certain of that. So what it does do, so it's not so abstract that it's just any generic game. What it does do is layer in some gameplay mechanics that represent some of the specialties of each side. So you've got the ability, I'm gonna just look at the rules here so I try not to miss too much, yeah. Uh, there's some German inf infiltration capabilities Obviously, there are forts in this as well. There's the Allied Assault Doctrine, which allows them to use a different CRT. It's a little more bloody. You know, Monty was pretty free and liberal with his men. So there's that. <clears throat> there's a, a resilience uh, capability that the, uh, the Germans receive, mainly because they have a capability there to... They, they did a lot better job of recovering uh, forces uh, from the battlefield, uh, tanks and things like that. Um, and then, of course, then you've got the whole Panzer Doctrine thing where you've got uh, 
momentum, pants of superiority, and pants of shock. So it's got three elements there, and they tend to start really piling up the the value add. And when when the panzers come here, if the in this particular scenario is playing, you see that you know having them doubled and then get a DRM and then potentially get another move, half move, something like that, with the potential with the additional combat. Is that right? After German player completes activities, may perform a section a second action, and then depending on what action they originally did, they could combat. Combat minus one DRM. If they combated, they could move or half move. That's pretty powerful stuff. And it, so that's why uh, trying to hold to Brook and let it be siege, bad idea. You need to run. As soon as those Germans hit the board, you need to book it back, I don't know, to Solom or Badi or, or somewhere there along the next escarpment line. Buy some time probably, and then get some reinforcements coming into the board. So I liked, I, so I like some of that sort of uh, fluid, well, the fluidity of the game is great, but then also just how they're trying to model some of the unique aspects of the game. You've got to do the rail, rail lines and finish the roads around to Brook and all that sort of fun stuff. All pretty straightforward stuff. So plays super quick, plays well. Uh, is it gonna be my go-to game? No. Uh, but it is going to be a game that I would use if I uh, were trying to introduce someone into wargaming to whet their appetite. If they had an interest in the African campaign and wanted to understand a little, little bit more about it, this actually is a, a quite a good introductory game. Now, it's not Root, right? It's not a Euro. It's not a war game dressed up as a Euro. It's a war game. So let's don't get me wrong there, uh, but it is, it's it plays fast, in which I think that's you know part of the the challenge we have with a lot of war games is they take too long to play. You can play a very short scenario here, and then keep going if you wish, and get a great experience out of it, and then kind of go forward from there. And I think this would engage people's interest because it's a very attractive map. The components are very attractive. I really like the colors on the box. I don't like the big black band across the box and you know kind of the you know let's slap a picture of Rommel on the cover type of thing but overall it's a very visually appealing and accessible game I and so I'll say that so that we could end this conversation right there I will just make one other point that the you know the these gaps in the maps are very straightforward to work out it's a simple mechanic to allow uh, this thing not to be five maps wide uh, and, and it works very well and you will not be uh, pushed out of your immersion in the game by it. So there you go. All right, that's all I had to say about this. Quick look at it and we'll definitely be setting it up again soon. I imagine it is selling well. Uh, Ted has done a good job at serving uh, some of the errata up already, but people have found little niggles here and there. Most of them are clarifications, so that's nice to see there's not huge issues with the rules so far. I imagine once you get deeper into the campaign play that we'll, we may find some oddities, but who knows. With chip pull, I would say if you find an oddity, pack it up, start again, or start from, rewind it, right? I take a picture of the map at every end of every turn, and with, with counter density like this, like it's easy for me to rewind and go, well, I kind of screwed that up. Let's let's redo that turn, put all the chits back in the cup, start pulling and see what happens different. Just a little tip for you guys that are playing solo. All right, I gotta, uh, I gotta roll, I gotta go catch a plane. So let's go do that. Talk to you soon.